What is up players, it's Warbots Tay back up in this mug doing another video unboxing and review. This time we're going to take a look at the Wild Warrior number one from the Cyborg Miniatures range. This is, uh, I guess, another miniature made in resin and I'm going to show the completed painted model of the Wild Warrior 2 so we can take a look at the similarities. The uh, most obvious thing I can see right off the bat is the prodigious belly, the trousers. Uh, most of the sculpt looks the same, like the head, the mohawk, and the three plates, the three braided beard in the front, the uh, trim on the cloak, even the little seams down the back. Where we do see some difference is that this guy is going to be holding one axe pointed forward like that and the other axe is kind of slung over his right shoulder and we're going to be attaching the head with some super glue now um, just taking a look at the model and the pieces I notice that there is a little bit of flash these uh, resin figures do have some extra bits of resin that do need to be cleaned off Whenever you're cleaning off mold lines and extra bits of resin like that, you can see the mold line going right up the axe head there. You want to use the back of your hobby knife, not the blade. If you use the blade, you might gouge too far into the material and then uh, you might reveal some air bubbles or air pockets underneath and uh, you don't want to actually gouge out the sculpt itself. You want to just clean the mold line off of the sculpt, which is uh, surprisingly what the back of your hobby knife will do really, really well. Um, so I don't see any actual air bubbles popping through the resin, but just take a look at the quality of the design. It looks really, really nice. The uh, I don't know, embroidery, filigree, the detail on the axes is really, really good. And if you have a nice uh, three-step gold formula, my personal one is at the moment Retributor Gold shaded with either Agrax Earthshade or Seraphim Sepia or Raglan Flesh Shade depending on how dark, red, or yellow you want your eventual gold to be. And then highlighting back up with Retributor Gold. I've also just got gotten in a new gold set from Metal and Alchemy or scale color rather, the Metal and Alchemy Golden series. And I'm going to be trying that out too. That's got a bunch of different colors. So uh, I'm always on the lookout for new new products, new formulas. I know Vallejo's Old Gold and uh, what was the other one? Old Gold and Rich Gold, I believe, were very, very good. I liked that one really. Uh, it was really effective at creating what I believed was a believable gold. The Old Games Workshop, uh, not Gehenna's Gold, but Shining Gold was really good too. Gehenna's Gold just doesn't... For me, it appears a little artificial. It doesn't look like the finished product doesn't look like real gold plating would look or real gold would look. So I uh, don't really prefer it as much. But yeah, I'm I'm going to really enjoy painting this guy up. I had a great time painting up the Wild Warrior number two. I probably should have looked at these. These models are they're going to be done for a commission and... Um, I probably should have done them in order for my unboxing, but uh, I'm really, really excited. Oh, is this a air bubble right here inside of his stomach, or is that just... No, okay, that's a piece of dirt or something. These models, the expression, the quality of the sculpt, I, I noticed it when I first did my unboxing, but when I actually got into painting, I mean, if you can see... The expression and the uh, amount of detail. This is kind of what I wanted my Slayers to look like. Uh, proportioned and very, um, I guess, believably sculpted. The old Dwarf Slayers, the metal ones that they did not actually ever update from Games Workshop, I wish that they, they had done them a little bit more like realistically, like these guys. Because even though he's <laughs> kind of morbidly obese, the um, just proportions look more, I guess, uh, natural. So the detail here on the side, his, his ribs, uh, the muscles, the um, detail on the 
fur trim there. It's it's all really really fun to paint. I'm using the Cyborg uh, website, Cyborg Miniatures website, as a reference for my clients' dwarves, and um, I'm really really happy. Stay tuned because I've got a lot more dwarves to show off. Not just their Wild Warriors range, but also some Moscow's dwarves. I've also got uh, some pretty cool Tau vehicles in camouflage scheme. I want to show off how I did those and um, a bunch of other things. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. All right, players, we're back. I wanted to show you the completely built up model. Here he is. He's looking fantastic. I drilled and pinned his arm there right by the elbow and uh, in the actual arm. And then I inserted a little pin and glued both sides. It was just a brass rod that I inserted into the shoulder and then I clipped off with a little bit sticking out and then I stuck it into the other side which I had drilled in the arm and there it is. I did the same thing for the axe head. He looks pretty cool. There is a little bit of a mold line down the right leg and the right side of the body I had not seen earlier but overall what a great looking model you guys. He just looks so expressive and um, perfect for any uh, regiment of dwarfs or pseudo dwarfs and uh, I can't wait to get started with them. I also drilled and pinned his foot you see into the base so I'm gonna uh, do a little gap filling there to just really close him up and get him right on the base. The base is the same as the previous one. It's a little bit of rubble with the skull there uh, so if you want to see that base up close then you can check out the other a video where I review Wild Warrior number two but there he is and I'm really really happy with this build you guys so um, thanks for watching don't forget to leave a comment below before you go and uh, check out my patreon I just posted up my first patron podcast up there and uh, I also posted up a premium podcast there for my $20 a month or more subscribers. So if you want to get into that level, uh, you're going to be getting two Warboss Tay podcasts there. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, if not, just keep getting the free content here. I'm going to be doing a lot more unboxings, video reviews, um, project updates, and all that sort of stuff as we get headed into the month of May and the Warboss Tay Painting Challenge. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next one.